to wait till everybody joins the meeting. We've got about 20 people right now. Good morning. I guess it's noon for some of you. Okay, great. And I want to welcome everyone to the third Slow Flowers member meetup virtual edition coming to you on April 10th. And I'm just grateful that uh, all of you took time to join us this morning. We're going to kind of just do a little housekeeping here because people are still joining in. Uh, I appreciate that you are on mute or that you'll put yourself on mute, um, but you can use the hand raise question and um, during the Q&A and also post your questions um, in the chat because uh, we're going to have questions Q&A time at the end of uh, our, our conversation with Holly. Um, so good morning. I'm Deborah Prinzing. I just want to thank you all for joining um, in the chat. You will see I've posted some links. I have the YouTube link, which is last week's playback, which is great because we didn't get a recording of our first week. So if you want to go back and see what uh, Missy Palacall presented about sort of a social media calendar uh, for uh, just staying focused and having some structure in your life. That's in uh, her present, our presentation from last week, as well as Amelia Elo from Rooted Farmers kind of did a walkthrough and demo about a new marketplace for flower farming. That's in the YouTube as well. Uh, I also posted uh, a new badge, a new, I'm a um, member of Slow Flowers Society badge, which is in a PDF form, which you can download. And also, did you all see Google Doodle this morning gave a shout out to farmers, not flower farmers, but farmers. So I thought that was a fun thing to share. And also, um, I think that's it. Yeah, the YouTube and those two documents. So good morning, everybody. Um, we, we're going to do a couple things today. We're going to do giveaways at the end of the session, three more giveaways. And we've had some very good success with that in the last two weeks. Fun swag. And um, we are also going to try breakout rooms. Breakout rooms is a new concept for me. And um, this particular platform for Zoom is going to allow us to um, have some small group discussion, which is really hard when we have 50 people on the call. Um, so that'll be in the second half of this, of this uh, meeting. Okay, it looks like everybody who's in the waiting room has been admitted. Oh, one more. Sorry, look, I accidentally muted myself. Can you all hear me? Thumbs up? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Um, I want to welcome our very special guests uh, today. I'm delighted that Holly Chapel has um, given us a chunk of her crazy life and time this morning. Um, I say crazy only because she just told us she finished doing a demo, a live demo, I think, for Flower Magazine this morning. So we're grabbing her right, um, right on the heels of that. So Holly, welcome. Where are you? I'm right here, sweetheart. How are you? Hi. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the um, Slow Flowers virtual meeting. Holly is a member of Slow Flowers. Holly and I have collaborated on a number of wonderful projects, especially at Flower Stock. And I really admire how she walks the talk in uh, building community and also, um, you know, ever changing and a willingness to, to reinvent herself to pivot when uh, life makes lemons. And uh, Holly, I'd like to ask you to just talk a bit about a snapshot of uh, Chapel Designers, Holly Chapel Flowers, Hope Farm, all of your pieces, uh, what, where you're at right now, and then um, we can talk specifically about weddings. So thank you so much for joining us. Okay. I um, am the flower mama um, named by the Chapel Designers, um, and that's a collective of wedding and event designers, and we work together um, just to kind of support each other, lift each other up. We're in a closed forum. We um, share concepts, ideas, and also bodies with each other, um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, um, but we're just each other's best advocates. Um, I have Hope Flower Farm, which is something that my husband and I got about four and a half years ago. Um, it's two miles from the house that I live in, which is also fully planted. It's two acres here. Um, 
And then, I don't know, there's, there's so much going on. Right now. <laughs> my head is spinning. And um, mostly weddings and events was my real focus, but my designs were always inspired from the pieces that were here on the property and we just kept growing and that's where we're at and it's a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. So what I mentioned that you did the flower magazine thing today, but what are you doing with the flowers that are growing at Hope Farm? Well, so for us, this is normally a time of year where I um, hoard all those blooms for myself. Like I have like seven precious fritillaria because I don't have like massive amounts of particular types of flowers. I have a lot of daffs. I have a lot of hellebore, a lot of snowdrops, and that pretty much would have been all I had. And then last year we put um, a, like about 1500 tulips in. And I think it must have just been this like blessing that we did it because it was it gave me enough bulk to realize I could do something with what I had um, and then I almost cussed darned if the lilac didn't come in two days ago so oh, wow I'm so lucky and then I, I actually bought some poppies and ranunculus from Harmony Harvest those were the only things I purchased I bought for my girls and then um I just started making bouquets and put it up and my farm is very, very rural. I go up before their shift that they come to pick up the flowers. They're in the barn. They have a note um, and they were sent email directions not to go in the barn if another car is in the driveway. They're to wait until that person comes out before they can go in and find their flowers on the table. We scrub down all the tables before the next time slot. So like I've already done a t um, two deliveries this morning to the farm before the flower magazine thing. Now I'll go back up Clorox the tables again and then the two o'clock slot of people will come in. And it's it's been incredible. I, I, I just put it up on social media, um, on Instagram and Facebook and people are coming and it's been amazing. So that's where we're at. And you're in, oh, where in Virginia? I'm in Northern Virginia, I'm in Loudoun County, um, about an hour outside of Washington, DC. And so like, I, this, you'll love this, I went to a historic property down the road and asked if I could get lilac. And they're going to become flower growers like in a significant way. And she said she was member of Slow Flowers. And I said, oh, I know Deborah. And they're like, you know, Deborah Prinzing, you know, Deborah Prinzing. I'm like, yeah, I oh, know her. Oh, fun. I, mean, I, I know, her <laughs> I know Holly Chapel. Um, Holly, in any other year, what would your life look like without the coronavirus and the stay at home order and um, people freaking about, out about gathering together? What would you normally, how many weddings would you be juggling? What would your life look like? Um, it, through the years, it's it's varied. We used to do five to seven weddings a weekend. We did start doing more, um, you know, bigger events so that we weren't running to multiple locations in one weekend. Um, the last couple of years, I'd say 50 to 60, but then we also produce, you know, conferences and workshops at the farm. This year was supposed to be more education. We've been really building the farm and making it better and a balance of the weddings of my choice. Meaning I, I set rules for myself last year. I would not work with anyone ever again that did not allow me to have contact with the bride. I had a lot of really bad experiences last year because I you know, didn't know who I was designing for and it didn't feel purposeful and I'm not going to work this hard unless I'm in love with the client. So mm -hmm. um, that we were off to a really lovely year with education every single month. All of that has been canceled. Um, we had less weddings on the books. Um, and, you know, my first thought was the fear of, oh my gosh, you know, I've lost all my income. I should try and take more weddings. And, you know, we all as a team said, wait a second, like, our goal was to be at the farm more this year and to have more time with our families and to do the weddings of our choice. We're going to hold steady and make that happen. So um, I'm not going to just take a bunch of extra work out of fear. I'm going to take this opportunity that's been given to me because of this virus and spend more time at the farm and with my family. Um, 
maybe yeah. all for little weddings. That's one of the pivots we're going to do is I think small weddings will be a huge part of the economy. I think those are about the only weddings that will really happen this year. And um, we're going to start offering our farm for really small weddings, you know, nine and under or 20, 40, 50 people. I think that's all anyone's going to feel comfortable doing. So, and mm -hmm. then we'll be able to do all the floral design and we're doing all the growing. So mm -hmm. I think that's what it's going to look like. Uh, okay. I want to throw a couple questions at you and then our, um, any participants who are on the, um, you know, on this call, please type your questions. I know Kirsten Gordon has already jumped in with some questions and we'll, Lisa will manage those. Holly, um, in general, how would you recommend handling things like um, a bride who, or a couple who wants to reschedule or, um, you know, ask for their deposit back or, you know, like what, what are some general best practices in that field? Well, for me, um, I'm very, very careful not to take people's money up front. I only take 10% and I call that a non-refundable retainer. This way I'm not spending, I mean, this is, these are business practices I started many years ago and they're saving our fanny always in every situation. When I was young and poor, I was afraid I'd spend it on, you know, the the kids shoes or Cheetos or bread and milk, whatever. And so I would never take that money in in advance. And so I don't get the final until three weeks before, um, which causes my company to be very solid. And the money comes in when it's supposed to come in, goes to the wholesaler, goes to the laborers. You know, we pay our farm for the flowers as well. And then all of our margin is great. So for anybody that had a, a booking with me, it was only a 10% deposit. And if they didn't want to reschedule, we said it was non-refundable because it was, and I don't feel guilty about a 10% deposit, but I've offered them that amount and flowers on their chosen day. So, I mean, that's how I'm rolling. It's a very different business practice, but I would also say the reason my bouquets are selling and people are driving out to rural Virginia is because I treated people right. I'm very mm -hmm. adamant about, you know, giving people the money back if you have it. I understand if you've spent your, your income that you hadn't earned yet, which is a dangerous game, but it happens to people in emergency situations. I would just be honest with your clients and tell them that, you know, you use that money to live off of it and you're going to need some grace and some time to pay it back. Mm. Uh, so the 10% is enough to cover things like the consultation, the advanced, uh, you know, meetings and that sort of thing. Absolutely. I could easily just say it's non-refundable and it's for services rendered. Um, but I, I just, that, I think that is also acceptable to do that. Mm -hmm. I've just mm -hmm. wanted to offer these people other options because I do feel sorry for them. They're in the same situation we're in. So that's how I've been handling yeah. it. In general, are you seeing people uh, rescheduled for the fall or for 2021? Uh, so far, all of my, well, we do have a few winter girls, January, February, but most everyone was able to get in um, for the fall. There are some that canceled, though. They chose to cancel. Because of all kinds of reasons. They just don't want to go through it. They're fed yeah. up. <sighs> Which wow. Which is kind of understandable. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what I hope is that they'll still at least marry on the day they were supposed to, you know, be at some small service somewhere. Are you, so you're not doing any deliveries, even for these petite weddings, they, people need to come pick up from you. Is that correct? Well, weddings are closed as far as, I, I haven't had any requests to go off and do a small wedding during this period. Oh, okay. Um, right. So all of our weddings are done and then we'll go back to business as usual. They are picking up the bouquets at the farm. I'm not... I'm not getting near anyone. I'm, I am designing with a mask and gloves and I, I don't want to risk it. We are so quarantined. It's for real. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. I see. So you're, you're saying because of the, of the um, stay in place order and the no contact order that it, 
your governor has established, nothing's going to happen until that is lifted anyway, right? That's right. That's right. But I think when that, when we get beyond shelter in place, I think small weddings will be what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry if that wasn't clear. No, no, no. That's great. Um, well, I want to uh, open this up to some questions. And uh, Lisa, will you help me um, read some of the questions? And, and if others want, I know that a few folks have already posted questions in the chat box. Um, I'd love to have, I've got some more questions for Halia on another topic, which is the DIY florist. But we'll get to that at the end, because I know, I know you've got some, that's part of your world too. Uh, we have a question from Kirsten Gordon about Holly. How do you how are you describing these um, bouquets that people are picking up? Are you saying growers' choice? Do you share pictures, or how are you communicating that? I'm glad you got that question. Uh, go look at the Hope Flower Farm website under shop. It just it they haven't made. We tell them they can't make specifications. And I hope they don't walk in the barn and see somebody else's and switch them. I, I wonder about <laughs> that. But I, that's the thing that's been so beautiful about this is I can just make whatever I want. I, it's so much more methodical and wonderful than what I'm doing wedding work because I can just, I just, I know how many of a certain price point I have to make and I just go for it. So um, next week, the images right now are Eastery. Next week, we'll change them out to fresh images. But you can see how we did it. It was really easy to do. So far, so good. And oh, that's awesome. Lisa, you have some other questions to share? That was the only question I saw in the oh. um, chat. OK, I see Kirsten's adding a few more. She said um, she's been hearing that Bryce, oh, this is a question she had last week. Kirsten said, Gordon from Chicago, um, from Bloom Magic Weddings, had a bride, Holly, tell her that she would rebook for winter, but she wanted a discount because winter weddings are off season. And do you have any advice on how to handle that? Uh, I would... I would have to tell that person I'm terribly sorry. I mean, winter weddings are infinitely more difficult, and particularly for someone in Chicago, you should explain to her, now all the flowers will have to be packaged and it's actually more labor, and there's nothing growing locally, and all of the flowers will have to be brought in. So actually, if she really wanted to know the truth, it could probably cost her a lot more. Yeah, thank that you. Work, that might just make that person go yeah, away. Yeah, I think that's great. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Lisa, there's a few other questions. Do you want to, do you see those? Eustacia Marsalis? Yes, I've uh, just unmuted you if you'd like to ask your question to Holly. Hi, Holly. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate your input. Um, so when you, you're, you're keeping the 10% discount, I understand that, but then did you say something about giving that 10% discount in flowers if they rebook so you would basically recharge for the whole wedding again but just give it no no no. Time. if they decide not to go forward with right. their wedding and that 10 percent is tip it's non-refundable exactly it could, it, it, it could be over but because it's covid and because i feel sorry for them i did offer them that amount of flowers available to them on the weekend that they were supposed to marry. Uh, okay. All right. That, I also have the resources to do that. I'm not saying you have to do that. I do okay. feel comfortable with a 10% non-refundable as for services rendered. The time you spent ordering the flowers, writing the contract, all of that, the management of it. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just... I have the ability to do a, a little bit more in this circumstance because of my farm. So I'm just trying to take care of people because that's what I'm hoping people will do with us, right? Like, mm -hmm. so that's the situation. But if you had 40 or 50% of someone's money, I do not believe that that would be fair to try and hold on to that as non-refundable retainer and produce absolutely no service rendered. It doesn't, that's what I'm talking about. Is that right. clear? Right, okay, okay thank cool. you, I appreciate All it. All right, and thank you. And uh, we have a question from Carolyn for you, Holly. Hi, Holly, thanks so much for being here. Um, Hi. I was just curious about 
I don't know Virginia specific like stay at home order language, but um, in Washington, it's not totally clear whether we are still allowed to sell flowers from the farm or do pickups or do no contact deliveries and all of that. So I'm just wondering, do you have specific guidance about being allowed to do that? Or are you just kind of operating and hoping for the best um, since you're being so careful with it? I think if I understand correctly, because I'm agricultural and they're coming to the farm, it is allowed. Got it. Now here, I know that I'm allowed to sell them. Uh, they may or may not, I'm, this is where I'm not 100% clear, maybe they shouldn't really be going out and getting them. Um, but it is really kind of hard to determine because all of the rules are different from state to state. Right. I would also say that our rural and economic development um, started something called, um, what is it? Loudon Crafters or Loudon Made. And they're, they're also pushing the people out to these small businesses. So I feel like if the county is behind that, that I've definitely, and, and like I said, I mean, we are being so careful. It is a very huge open air space with the doors open and I'm not even seeing them. And they're instructed not to come in contact with anyone. So I, I do feel pretty certain that we are exactly as we're supposed to be. And I do believe in following the rules. Great, thank you. Holly, I'm gonna just, this is Deborah. I'm gonna tag on and just ask, I'm sure you're doing some kind of Venmo payment or like how are you collecting the, the purchases? I have a Squarespace website and it's all going through Square. My okay. team built it in like three hours. I'm, literally, I was like, you guys, we should make bouquets. And that's just how it happened. I think that was some of the other things you were asking me what I was doing to try and create income during this time. Uh, we've, done, we've done a bunch of things. We've moved really fast. And um, they're all on the computers and I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to get the orders done and clean the buckets and take care of the children. Um, but we started something called the Greenhouse, which is a community um, and it can be for dreamers, um, professionals, or just um, people who are getting started. And my son, Alex, the director of education is managing this place. It's like um, a Facebook forum, except for it's not, it's a community platform. And we're adding information in there and it's $10 a month. So people are signing up for that. And weirdly enough, right before this all happened, I filmed a kind of a do, uh, do it yourself um, online course for the compote and the pillow, which is the mechanic. I have a armature that I made with syndicate sales. And so we're actually, Alex is releasing it today at three o'clock. So we're just trying to um, shift um, and pivot and do anything we can to generate income in. And I, again, just like with my clients, like I, I'm not gonna, I'm not joking. Like I'm working right now to make sure that they stay employed, my team. I don't wanna lose them. And so if I can run around here and get the bouquets done, and do all the harvesting and the cleaning up and the laundry because the laundry, God, <laughs> um, you know, if I can do that and keep everyone employed, I'm really proud of that. And so for me, it's so funny because like this has gone full circle. I mean, all the way back, like this is how I started by selling bunches of lilac at my, you know, little town's festival that would have been this week and is canceled. You knew I was devastated. Yeah. People are coming to get those lilacs and to support our business. And, you know, in turn, I'm able to keep all of my team paid. I don't know how long I can do it for, but I'm willing to hustle mm -hmm. and, um, and make this work. And I think people, I'm really pleased to see I think people are respecting flowers in a way they never have before and they should because they're going to be a very, very precious commodity in the coming weeks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thank you so much. Local growers. Yes. Okay. I think there's a few questions uh, that have come in while we were chatting. Lisa, you want to jump in? I have a question from Rebecca about um, some other charges around weddings. Hi, do you um, 
add any additional charges to brides who have postponed? And also, do you use the same contract if you have a postponement? I, I have used the same contract. Look, I mean, I hear a lot of people talking about going to the lawyers and, you know, redoing this. I don't have the money to pay the lawyer right now. I'm not giving them anything. I am just putting in the contract that we've rescheduled to another date and that some substitutions may need to happen. There are a lot of people talking about warning people that, um, you know, flowers might be more expensive. I'm not having those conversations with people right now. They're too terrified. It's months before we're going to have a wedding. So in a few weeks, I'll start to say, mm, you know, maybe many flower farms have gone and we might have to change your flowers. I'm kind of hopeful about the fact that we're going to get some of our creative freedom back and get to just design because you know what, I'm much better at it that way when I'm not like shoved into this box. So I think it's going to be so good for us. If they made me redesign the wedding completely and change colors, I have warned all of them that I would charge some type of extra labor fee, probably three or $400. And then again, like I'm good because I'm waiting until three weeks before and this is once it's going once we launch that ship and order those flowers then it's non-refundable so we'll have that real conversation with them but I've just told everybody I'm here for you let's just you know you don't owe me any more money let's wait and see if this goes down because the other thing is like if I get all that money up front and then it doesn't happen, there, then that's a whole nother massive ramification. That's a lot of money you could owe people. The one thing I think Deborah did kind of ask me about is, I, if I was buying new inventory for someone, then I would get more than that 10% in here. Mm -hmm. Or if I was their event designer and I was consulting, that's different. Yeah. Holly, I think the most profound thing that you just said, which is going to have a ripple effect for everyone, is this, the silver lining may be that this COVID virus environment gives you more creative freedom because you have to, you have to kind of, Everyone has to be flexible and, you know, adaptive, including the wedding clients. That's right. I love it because I think, I think I know emphatically the most beautiful designs that are born at our studio are ones that somebody didn't jump in my head and say, I had to do it like this. And so I, I do think it's going to make things a lot better. Maybe our contracts can just be a lot looser. Mm, that's wonderful. Uh, Karen Thornton uh, shared on the group, Zoom group chat a uh, link to Holly's blog, the Full Bouquet blog, and she said that you recently wrote something really compelling, so I'm, I haven't read it yet. So thanks, oh, Karen, God, I don't for know sharing what that. Was. <laughs> that's where I got my start. If you, if you go back to that, like I put, I've started putting a few posts up, but you can go back to some ugly, ugly designs way long time ago. <laughs> we all have them. All the stories. <laughs> It's still fun to read. Uh, that's great. Uh, I think uh, we have one more question and then uh, maybe we'll, we'll try breakout rooms. Um, let's see. Do you, is there, I'm scrolling back. Lisa, do you see the one from uh, Kirsten about? I have gonna... one from, from Ellen. I'll find the one from Kirsten. Um, okay. uh, Ellen, I've unmuted you if you wanted to ask Holly your question. Sure. Hi. Um, I'm a flower farmer and I'm in Western New York state and I have yet to plant my field out. So I have a little bit of leeway with how much or how little to do this year. And I'm wondering if I should scale back, how much I should scale back. The majority of my sales come from you pick customers. I do do some weddings, but a part of me says people are gonna wanna be out and have a park-like environment, socially distanced with their kids, something to do during the summer. Um, the majority of my you pick sales are from July through October. So it's hard to determine how much an investment to make on the farm. Okay, I hope I don't tell you the wrong thing, but my um, everything in my being and core would say plant the hell out of those things. I mean, I would not be holding back this year. I feel like people are going to be desperate for flowers and I feel like the designers are going to, they're not going to be able to get what they need. If these weddings happen, like if the weddings are completely canceled, 
I mean, that could, that could be a real struggle. I myself have bumped up everything I'm growing. All, and I'm growing a lot of food too. My husband was like, why did you buy lima beans? I'm like, because you don't even <laughs> like lima beans. And I said, we're planning everything. So I, this would not be the year that I would cut back. At least do what you did before. Okay. I hope I'm not wrong. Well, I, I think might be eyeball deep in blooms, girl. <laughs> I think Ellen is going to report back to you, Holly, and let you know how that goes. I think yeah. that's. Oh my gosh, this is a defining moment right now. I hope I'm right, sweetie. No, you confirmed what I was thinking. I, you, you did, and we do. Part, the other half of our farm is vegetables, so people are going to have to eat. So that's a. That's yeah, a good you'll come up with a creative way to market the two together. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. I have a nice uh, follow-up question from Anika. Oh, sorry, I pounced oh. on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the the only question part of that um, comment was whether you're considering selling flower starts from your farm as well. It's something I've been thinking of. If I was more developed, so my flower farm has been for my guilty pleasure and my mm -hmm. clients and the students, right? So we weren't trying to sell uh, in this way. We, peonies was the one product we went great guns for. We have 2,000 in the field and I'm gonna, I'm, my goal is to sell those. But like plant starts, I don't really, there are a lot of garden centers around here. I'm not really equipped, but if I had it to sell, I would sell it. Like I'm looking at everything I have and saying, you know, Hey, you can have this, you can have this and putting it up on the shop. So I, I think it's a good idea if you have the means to do it. I'm sorry if that is, do you? Oh, that's do you great. Them? <laughs> One of the things I, I was going to buy some plant starts in here. I, I just need to get my husband behind me. I think this is a very great business opportunity. I wanted to make window boxes with herbs in them. So if I had the plugs for that, or even just beautiful flowering baskets and could put them up for sale for Mother's Day, I think they would sell like crazy. I just, you know, it's a lot to ask Evan to plant all the fields and build me boxes. <laughs> Evan, but, Evan, but, Evan but, has but I'm pushing it for it. I am. Evan but has to pivot too. <laughs> Evan has to pivot too, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all pivoting. <laughs> wow, this is great, Holly. I think uh, in the chat, I'm just seeing a lot of affirmation of what you're saying and that people are, <clears throat> people who are growers are feeling encouraged that they, their instinct is also telling them to grow. And does, uh, florists are saying that um, their customers are wanting local, you know, local sources of, and I think there's a concern about that in terms of, <clears throat> transportation footprint and for safety and knowing who grew those flowers. I mean, all of that, you're communicating that to your customers. And, and I think just everything we talked about to a trend summit, I mean, people are going to want things that are more comforting and homey and less ostentatious and over the top. And I think our flowers are, are you know, they're just more refined and comforting than something that looks manufactured. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. I just, but you know what? It's just so special. You know, when I go out there and I start gathering those things that, and then I go and give them to someone else, like that's gold to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been screaming over these flowers that I've made the last few days. It just feels different. So I'd love to be able to give those kinds of things to brides more on the regular. And I think we're going to see that happen. Okay, Holly, before we uh, wrap you up and um, let you go to the many other things that you're being asked to do this morning, <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about um, the, uh, the Holly Chapel uh, mechanics and how uh, that is, you know, the pillow and the egg are allowing maybe more people to design at home who aren't professionally trained and who are interested in having cutting gardens and having some tools because that is available uh, from syndicate sales through their consumer facing website as right. well, right? So what happens is you purchase two of the pillows and two of the compotes and an educational video of me teaching you how to use the mechanic is dispersed to you. Um, and so the mechanic is 
absolutely, I mean, and I think it's incredible because you're able to um, make the piece, pick up the design, cut the flowers again, refresh the water. It just, you know, the reusable, repurposable. I think that you, know, if you are a farmer um, that has like a little farmer's market stand, having those there for people to buy is also like, I've been surprised with how many of the orders we did this week, people asked for the mechanics as well. It encourages your um, consumer to come back and buy more flowers and to practice arranging. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's wonderful because it is eco-friendly and I, it, it is how I was designing. It was intended to make my life better, but what we're finding is that it makes designing easier for everyone. So, so I, where, where is that set that you're talking about? Are you selling that on your website? We have it on our site. The link is in my Instagram bio, and then it's also available on 46 and Spruce. So Great. you can buy just the mechanics or the mechanics and the education. Okay, I'm gonna put that link in there for everybody too. Um, and then okay. there's the greenhouse thing too. So those are the two things right now. Oh, right. We'll share that too. Uh, this is a kind of a completely different, uh, but fun question from, um, I think Susan, she said, shifting gears, can Holly describe the use of taper candles in the beautiful backdrop behind her? Do you know? It says you, um, you have a photo behind you. Do you know? Oh, I was like, what? I started looking at the wall behind me. Okay. <laughs> the use of tapered candles. You've got well, um, like glass, glass, uh, glass hurricanes. Thieves. Yes. So that's inventory that we have. Um, I can try and get that link to Deborah if you need it. Um, I used to buy them from Floral Design Solutions and now someone else has them. So of course we're not allowed to have open flames. So those cylinders slip over the candle, the tapered candles, but let me tell you, it is a big, bad, awful, awful task. It takes a day of cleaning those cylinders to get them back in the box. So, I mean, sometimes we just want to throw them against the wall and not clean them anymore, but you know, <laughs> we have to reuse and recycle and repurpose and we rewash and we rewash. So there's a, there's a cleanup fee when, when it's couples a, want to rent that. That's a beast back there, but there is amazing stuff. There's spirea from my garden and that actually, that's the weekend my mom passed away. Oh. I didn't do that wedding the weekend my mom passed yeah. away. But we found pink jasmine and it's flying out of that design. And it was, you know, that magical piece from my garden that just, it was like, that That was a beautiful wedding. Mm, it was that's gorgeous. Fun. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you ask one more question, I think, and then we're going to um, jump into breakout rooms because we want to try this uh, platform on Zoom and see if we can go into small groups. So, um, Lisa, I'll let, I'll let you manage that last question. Uh, Rebecca, I think we had a question about uh, dahlias um, moving from spring to fall. I've just unmuted you. Are you there? Yes. Um... So I have a, a June 6th wedding and the whole vision is peonies, peonies. I've actually never really done a, a whole peony wedding. I'm so excited. It's really blush and light pink and, and white and green. And uh, June 6th is just so beautiful. And so she's wondering, you know, if she should maybe postpone till next spring. I just I can't switch my vision to like, where, what, Cafe Olay's? I, I just, I don't you know. You say that like... Cafe LA's like they're not as every bit as sexy as a peony. <laughs> all of my, all of, we have 150 Cafe LA tubers coming. All of my peony girls are Cafe LA girls and they should be every bit as proud. What yeah. are you, the I other know. thing is, when is she, when is she going to go to? Could she, could she get the tail end of the Alaskan peonies? I don't, I mean, those are so expensive. I, maybe they're, they're not that expensive. Mm. What's, we've what's got, month? I think we've got an Alaska peony grower on here. We better get, let her jump in and talk. Yeah. Who's jumping? Cause I always feel like, I don't know if, I mean, this bride has a large budget, but. But it, I mean, it would still have to be summer, not fall, fall. Do you know when she's moving to? 
you mentioned some August dates. I'm also pregnant, so I'm due in August. So I'm like, I just want to give her my full attention. Uh, yeah. I think it's Allison Gaylord is on the call. Can we can we have her jump in? August, in? she's in for peonies. Do you, you see Allison? Allison, I've un unmuted you. Oh, maybe we lost her. Well, well we've got okay. Miss, Misty from All Dahlia Up can talk about peonies from Alaska, maybe. Hi, Misty. Hi. Oh. Here. There we go. Sorry we about go. that. I don't grow peonies, but <laughs> are, are we talking about uh, she's wanting to switch her wedding till August? Yeah, just, just moving from that light blush peonies to maybe I would move to um, dahlias, yeah. Well, in my opinion, yes, move to dahlias, but <laughs> <laughs> I understand the peonies. I, I get that. I get that. Um, gosh. I think yeah. these are every bit as gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. And in August, we're peonies here in Alaska. It's cutting it close. Oh, we've got Rita from Alaska Perfect Peonies on. Maybe she can jump yeah. in. Better at telling you. Thanks, Misty. Maybe another one is limelight hydrangea. That's really lovely. Okay. It doesn't look like, you know, it's not as forced as the regular stiff round South American hydrangea. Yeah. And it gets a little bit, it should be a really pretty creamy white and you could do a little bit of a blush tint on it mm -hmm. to add a little bit, but the shape is so lovely. I'm wanting that the rounder shape. I think I was excited um, versus the, you know, the cafe au lait. Hey, can, this is Deborah here. I, I see Rita, uh, Rita Joe from Alaska Perfect Peonies is on. Ala Rita, can you just talk a little bit about peonies from Alaska when they're available and, um, and what, what people could, you know, expect as a, a late uh, source for peonies if uh, a June wedding in the lower 48 is, is, you know, misses that window? You bet. So Alaska will probably start shipping around the last week of June. And we have farms in all different elevations that will probably ship all the way through the middle of September. And what about the costs? Um, there was well, we aren't, uh, as far as I know, none of the farms are raising any of their prices. And if you go to our website, Alaska Perfect Peony, you'll see all of our prices are posted on there. There's no surprises. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Rita. And I do see that um, Allison Gaylord uh, with Alaska Beauty Peony is saying she'll have peonies available through late August and she put her link in the chat. Um, so, okay, let us know how that goes, Rebecca. <laughs> um, Holly, thank you so much. We put a lot of your resources in the group chat and we'll also post um, the greenhouse link if we haven't done that. Um, you've been a real inspiration here and I know that people are just feeling a little less alone uh, having this time to connect with with you and and through you your farm and your whole community thank you i'm happy like you said deborah the answer is in the garden <laughs> yep that's one of the first conversations we ever had and that came up five or six years ago i've thought about that so much this week like how many gifts that garden has given me and how it has solved so many problems for me i'm so grateful for that farm mm. and the land and the flowers Hmm. All right, I'm going to go back to making yep. bouquets. I have quite a few orders to fill. We'll see you on social and, and uh, have a wonderful holiday weekend with your family. And thank you so much for your generosity, Holly. All right, bye. I love you, Deborah. See bye you bye. later. Bye. Bye, everybody. Okay, we are going to try breakout rooms. And I've never done this before. We tried to have a practice earlier uh, this week, and it was a bit of a disaster because the technology didn't cooperate. But if, if you all want to hang in here, we're going to go for like maybe 10 minutes, put everybody into a group uh, like for a conversation because we've all been quiet here. And uh, then we'll, we'll bring everyone back at about five minutes before uh, the hour. Does that sound good? And if this isn't for you, you're welcome to jump off. But I'm going to click on breakout rooms and see what it says. Assign participants into... We're going to do five rooms automatically. Let's see how it happens. What I would recommend is if one person could kind of lead the conversation after you all introduce each other, uh, each, introduce yourselves to one another, and then um, maybe someone could jot down notes of some of the, the key points that, um, that come out of that, and we can maybe share them when we come back together. All right, I'm going to click on Create Rooms. Let's see what happens. 
it looks like everyone's back uh, either that or they've they've signed off so thank you all for being um being good sports i i jumped into two rooms and and heard from those folks that this was kind of a, a appealing idea to allow more conversation and a little bit digging deeper on personal questions and just sharing so let's do it again next week and i think maybe what we'll do is not we'll have we'll definitely have a special guest like holly maybe we won't go as long and then um uh we're going to try to do theme or topic based breakout rooms although i did really appreciate deborah's suggestion of doing it by region sometime in the future um so i love you all thank you so much i want to announce the winners of our giveaways from last week um we did a random we do random drawings based on the people whose names are in the chat bar and i want to want to say right now before you hang up if you have not renamed yourself now is the time to do it because um sometimes it just says iphone or ipad and we don't know who that is and you won't get a chance to win good stuff if you're not re-identified but nisha do you have most of the names yeah, and I even reached out to those that didn't have their names, so. Thank you for doing that, Nisha. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. So Carolyn Kolb of Folk Art Flowers uh, last uh, from last week uh, won a set of my books, uh, the Slow Flowers book and the 50 Mob OK. Congratulations, Carolyn. Uh, Linda O'Hara from Lavender Blue, Lavender Blue Floral Artistry uh, won a set of three of Holly's uh, pillow mechanics that she talked about. And Diana Precht from Rock, Rocky Mountain Blooms in Colorado won uh, the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market Vini. So that was pretty cool. And let me show you what swag we have this week. Oh, and everybody also received a, a Johnny's, um, a set of Johnny's custom seed packet that they created for last year's American Flowers Week. So these are 2019 seeds, but I think they're pretty viable. And there's a beautiful... Um, wearable botanical um, uh, dress on the front. So we have another uh, Slow Flowers Society t-shirt to give away. And I'm basically just sending larges or extra larges out so that I don't have to guess people's sizes. This one's a small, so that's the back. So that's one giveaway. I'm just burning out through my inventory of Slow Flowers and 50 Mob OK books. So we'll do another set of that. And then amazing all the goodies that I could find in my garage. I have a beautiful set of EcoFresh wraps, two sizes, uh, both the, this is the small, and then the baggie that goes with it. And this uh, was donated, I think, for a Slow Flowers Summit that we somehow forgot to give away, but it comes with a tote. And there is a nice, generous set of wraps that will be really great for somebody to use for on-farm pickups. So those are going to be our giveaways this week. And I thank you all. We'll post those on social media and put them in the follow-up uh, email. And uh, please have a wonderful weekend. I am uh, definitely going to, um, I'm definitely going to see you next Friday, April 17th. We'll do this again and we'll, we'll plan ahead, email all, any, anyone on the Slow Flowers member mailing list, uh, what, the themed rooms will be so that you can um, be prepared to let us know what room you want to go into. It's great to see all of your faces and hear your ideas and uh, engagement. And I wish you all a, a wonderful week. Um, we're pivoting, we're persevering, we're reimagining. And I think that that's, that's really all we can do right now is um, live in the moment and be hopeful for the future. Love you all. Thanks.